Joining me now, the host of Discovery Channel's Expedition Unknown, Josh Gates. He turned down a trip to the Titanic on Ocean Gates Titan, Titan submersible due to safety concerns. That is the vessel that was lost this week. And David Marquet, retired U.S. Navy captain and former submarine commander. He is the best-selling author of Turn the Ship Around and Leadership is language. David, you and I spoke on Monday night, and this is the outcome you expected. What happens now? Yeah, now I think uh, they're going to try and pick up all the pieces uh, with the little rovers that they have and and put them back to and bring them up to the surface and put them back together. And we need to do an analysis on the vessel as best as possible to see exactly where the failure was uh, that caused this uh, implosion. The vessels, the, the the whole of the vessel, the main part, is made of three different materials, the carbon fiber sleeve, two titanium end bells, and the glass viewing window at the end. Jason, what are you thinking tonight? Uh, from my perspective, uh, look, first of all, I'm still stunned by, you know, the, uh, the outcome here. I think, uh, like many people, it was... Uh, always in the back of my mind as, as a probable outcome here, but I really did hold out hope until this afternoon. And obviously my heart is broken for the passengers aboard and for their families, uh, a really difficult situation. And I think uh, a lot of questions now that need to be asked and answered in the coming uh, weeks and months about uh, this platform and about how it was built and uh, fundamentally uh, how safe it, it really was. You felt it wasn't, Josh. You had the opportunity to go on this vessel with this company and you chose not to. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I went up to Ocean Gate's headquarters uh, in Washington. I spent uh, several days up there with Stockton and uh, with uh, other Ocean Gate employees and engineers. And I, I took a ride in Titan. This was in 2021, just a few months before Titan was going to take its first group of passengers down to Titanic. It had just come back from a pressure test on the East Coast and uh, we dove out in Puget Sound and you know, look, the, there are elements to Titan that were very impressive when you first walk up to the sub. It's a very large vehicle uh, for this kind of a, a mission. You know, most of the subs that go down to Titanic are two or three person, very very cramped submersibles. Titan has a very novel design, so an impressive vehicle when you first see it, and um, and a very, very unique design. But fundamentally, it is so large because it is made in a very novel way. It's made of this carbon fiber, as opposed to having a pressure hull built out of steel alloy or titanium. And and that carbon fiber is really, I think, the, the big question mark here. And it certainly was for me. There's just very little data about how that material is going to behave and the kind of pressure cycles that it was going to be put through and the kind of temperatures it was going to be exposed to. And there was simply nothing to benchmark it against. And so the more time I spent in Titan and, and talked with Stockton, I just couldn't get comfortable with the fact that there was almost no way to assess the risk of the vehicle. It was impossible. David, it has been an awful few days as people have followed this story, as friends and family have waited in panic. The Navy now says it detected sounds consistent with an implosion shortly after the sub went missing and told the on-site commander. What do you make of that? Why are we only learning about this now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. Um, it's supposedly top secret. But uh, I can tell you that an implosion like this is a, would be a very loud and an unusual sound in the ocean. And in those deep sound channels, it's very dense, it's very cold water, and it's, it really carries sound a long, long, like, like 1,000 miles or 1,500 miles. So that noise, if you're listening for it, uh, you could hear it a long, long way away. I don't even know how to ask this then. Does it give you comfort? If it was an, an implosion like that, that they weren't in there for days suffering and freezing, David? Yeah, it, it does. My, I, my expectation is that at that pressure, this would have been an instantaneous failure. They probably never even realized something was amiss and then they were gone. And for me, when we were at sea, we always wanted... That's what we wanted if we were going to go down, uh, sitting on the bottom for five days, uh, slowly asphyxiating yourself and dying in carbon dioxide poisoning. Uh, that's 
that's much, much worse. Josh, what do you think? Well, you know, I echo that. I certainly do think it's starting to look like it was a massive catastrophic failure that happened on the way down. Uh, and if that's the case, then it would have happened extremely quickly. The kind of pressure we're talking about here is is monumental. Uh, and hey, look, this is, a, you know, personally, I knew two of the passengers aboard. I knew Stockton again, who I spent time with. I knew Hamish Harding from the Explorers Club. Uh, you know, this is just such a sad situation. And uh and as I've said a few times uh, already today, I really do have a great amount of admiration for the passengers aboard. Um, as anyone who's been in a submersible can tell you, uh, it takes a lot of courage, a lot of determination, whether it's on Titan or any platform, um, as a civilian to go down and, and go to these depths and take on a mission like this. And so my heart really breaks for them and for their families. I, I think that um, we should have a lot of admiration uh, and respect for them taking on uh, something like this, which is, which is not easy to do. Josh, you do really dangerous things like this for a living. Does what happened this week, do you think it's going to impact the decisions you make going forward, knowing even what these families went through this week? Yeah, look, I mean, risk assessment is something that we all do every day in one way or another. Um, and you have to judge risk against reward. You have to judge it against the, the kind of risk you're willing to take on as an individual. I think that Titanic as a destination, uh, as an idea even, is just incredibly meaningful for some people. Uh, certainly, um, uh, P.H. Narjale, who was aboard, was one of the world's foremost Titanic experts. This is something that he was incredibly passionate about. And so there are people who, you know, climb mountains, people who uh, jump out of airplanes, people who want to go down to see Titanic. And I, I don't uh, begrudge any of them their, their passions. I think for me, uh, as with anyone, if there's something that you really feel is a meaningful thing, you weigh out that risk, uh, risk with the reward. For me, with Titan, I just couldn't get comfortable with it because I didn't feel as though the risk could even be evaluated. And I think there are some big questions here uh, about the design of this hull, the manufacturing of this hull. And I think, um, and we're going to have to answer those questions, uh, you know, in the coming weeks. So ironic, the Titanic, Ocean Gate, they ignored the warnings, they ignored the warnings, and now they have suffered similar fates by one another's side at the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm.